This video is the first in a multiple part series which will show some tips and tricks on how to create a typical oil field building using SOLIDWORKS. This part will focus primarily on skid runners and roll end creation. So let's get started. Let's go to our top plane, create a sketch, our rectangle. The outside of our runners will be 96 inches. The length of our skid is going to be 40 feet. Let's create another sketch for the outriggers. The outside of our skid is going to be 12 feet. And outriggers are going to start 18 inches in. Let's go to our weldment. W flange, we're going to pick a line. Locate profile, we're going to pick this corner. Uh, let's see, we are going to create a sketch. This is going to represent the size of our pipe. Go with a six inch pipe. Make these tangent, make this and this tangent, create a line, and then snap. We're going to place this angle at 20 degrees, go to our power trim, cut. We are going to finish our sketch cut through all. Uh, now we're going to create the plate that rolls up. So let's just look normal to this and create a new sketch. Line, we're going to start at this corner. Curl around. Close this off. We're going to make this and this collinear. Make these tangent. make these concentric. I'm going to make this line and this line equal. And the last step is to give this a height. I'm just going to go a sixteenth under. We're going to extrude, pick our profile, blind, up to surface and we are going to make sure we merge our result. Now we're going to mirror this profile. Mirror. We're going to use our right plane. Uh, features the mirror. It'll be our cut and boss. So we should get a preview here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pattern this using a sketch pattern. And we're going to use a couple 3D sketches. So the first thing we're going to do is turn off the visibility of this sketch. And we're going to go to 3D sketch and place a point. And we're going to place the point on the center of this flange. Finish our sketch. And just to make it clear, we're going to rename this 3D sketch to select point. Let's turn the visibility of this one back on. We're going to create another 3D sketch and we're going to put a point here and this is going to represent our center runner. Finish sketch. Go to pattern. Uh, sketch driven pattern. Selected point. 
that would be this one and bodies to pattern will be this one and you can see it already picked up our 3D sketch for our reference sketch so if, you ha if you're not familiar with sketch driven patterns um, this is a good way to use them you can see if we wanted to add another runner in the center if we wanted to have a forerunner skid we could actually just go back into this sketch and edit the location of our point so we'll move it here create another point and now we have an extra runner so we'll have a forerunner skid because we're eventually going to mirror this one on the outside so it's very powerful um, it's really a handy tool to use so once you want to locate them all you do is go in and dimension your points and they will follow so if we go back if we want to go back to a three runner skid we can take this line snap to the center we'll have a three runner skid so the next step is to do the cut here the relief for the roll end so to do that we're gonna go on here create a sketch We're going to make this at 45. And I'm going to make this and this collinear. I'm going to pick this line and the edge of the radius right here, collinear. And I'm going to project geometry here project that edge. We're going to make it construction and then we're going to just dimension this point to here. So we're going to say it's going to be 1 8 past. And then <clears throat> instead of making a collinear constraint between this edge and this edge, we're actually just going to put a dimension. And we're going to make it so it's wide enough so if we change the size of this flange that it'll always be sure to cut through. The reason I don't put a collinear constraint is whenever SolidWorks regenerates this model with a different size W flange, sometimes the cut doesn't work. So I find it's more stable to actually just give it a set dimension. So let's go in, finish our sketch, and do a cut through all. So there's our relief. We're going to go in and mirror for our mirror plane, we'll use our right plane. Features to mirror will be our cut. So now we have a cut on both sides. We're going to go into our mirror feature once again. This time we're going to mirror about our front plane and we're going to mirror this front body. And now we have a good start for a skid template. So if we were to go back and we wanted to change this member we could just go to let's we'll say a W14 so all of them regenerate one thing you notice how these ones are not in line anymore because whenever you recreate a member with the weldment profile it always defaults to the center point and the way to fix that is to go in we're gonna drag our end apart up and what we're going to do is we're going to put a move body. We're going to use the move body tool and we're going to constrain it. So we're going to move this body and we're going to constrain this edge to this line on our sketch. So instead of locating a profile with a weldment, we're actually going to have a feature that moves it. So now if we go back and we change this to Let's go back to 12 at 79. All the parts stay in line. And you can see our roll ends and our features all stay intact. If we wanted to make this a forerunner skid, we just go back into our 3D sketch, remove that constraint, place a point. We would dimension this appropriately. And now we have a forerunner sketch, or a forerunner skid. 
Um, we'll add more detail to this skid in the next video.